I suppose you would call it a young actor's dream to star in two hit movies before you're 25. I know it was one of my dreams. Uh, and to be handpicked by Neil Simon for the Broadway version of his life story. What else? Uh, Co-starring with people like Dustin Hoffman and Sean Connery um, and uh, what's his name? Marlon Brando. Uh, he's uh, Matthew Broderick. It actually happened to him. And his latest film is The Night We Never Met. Matthew, I thank you for being here and I congratulate you on having had almost all of my dreams come true was in your life and that we should mm. finally end up here at the Riga Royal it's all come around. Hotel. Yeah. Yes. Um, I, you know what I mean when I say, have you finally shaken <coughs> Ferris? Ferris. Um, um, I, am no. I phrasing that right? No, no, it, yeah, uh, you are. Uh, I'd love to say that I've shaken Ferris and you know, moved on, I, I, and I, I feel like I have, but when I uh, get on a subway, uh, I more often than not probably hear at some point during the ride, Ferris! Yeah, Ferris. That's hey, Ferris. So, and it's t it's ten years ago. Is it ten years? Just about uh, eight, ten. Wow. You know, yeah. a, a flash. But uh, uh, it, that's an odd feeling. I mean, I'm glad that they like it and everything. But I have a certain desire to say, you know, Which, for didn't those you like anything since then? Well, uh, <laughs> yeah. did, did you get that? Have uh, Have you acted since then? Oh yeah, people? yeah. I get. You know, how come you don't make movies anymore? You were good. I hope you slap these people no, across no, the No, no, I say, yeah, I'll I mean, do my best. I don't know how violent you are, I'll but... do my best. Wow. Um, for those who just were born, uh, we're, we're referring to... The Ferris is a role uh, yeah. we're referring to, and apparently people will, will not li let you out of that. No, uh, no. Mm. Some people. It, yeah. Well, it strikes a chord with people. Everybody's glad to you know, want to get it, away with it. Get, it must get have, yeah. Take off. And yeah. It, it's funny also because I didn't, it's not particularly like my life that, you know, of any of the roles I've played, that's not the one that I feel most, that I identify with the most, you know. I mean, it's it's a John Hughes uh -huh. idea, script. I mean, he's a very strong person and it's 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 really his movie, I, I feel. And these fans sort of want you to be the that yeah, character. Right. And yeah, I think they think I thought you, of You it, think it's you know? his his film, really. Much more than mine, yeah. yeah. They should stop him on the train if they knew what they were doing. <laughs> Nobody has the same reaction to being around you that I do, that I think of explosions and bombs going off and people's heads being blown off. And uh, No, not, not very was, often. Was, was anyone hurt in the opening sequences of Glory, the uh, film? A few people were hurt in the final battle at night. You know, yeah. We got away with the daytime massive explosions and extras running around. Uh, but the nighttime sequence was kind of, I think two or three people broke bones. Broke no, bones. Nobody was killed or yeah. seriously hurt. But they also didn't, you know, it was so many extras, it was so many people, you know, here, take a uniform, you get $50, go down to mm -hmm. whatever and run around with a pickaxe or a, uh, you know, a bayonet. And uh, people didn't really know what they were doing, half of them, so it's remarkable that there were I'm surprised there isn't more mayhem. Yeah, I used to. I'd come out of my trailer sometimes and find guys like sleeping in the shade under the uh, under the trailer because because pe it was people who were unemployed and had uh, nothing better to do. Uh, would you talk about a f what really does sound like a fantasy and verify for me that it happened that um, actors audition all their lives and don't get any parts? Yeah, you got two. Yeah. Uh, my first two. Is that what you're yeah, referring to? It, yeah. It sounds almost too good to be true. And yeah. <laughs> I read uh, for Brighton Beach Memoirs, which was a Neil Simon play, yeah. uh, when I was, I guess, 19. And I hadn't really, I had had one paying acting job, but very little up to then. And uh, I read for it, I think, four times, and the last two were on the Broadway stage, you know, where I had never even acted. And I got to, Neil Simon was there, the last two, you know. And I had never even thought that he was a, I thought it was more like a thing. Neil, you know, Neil Simon production is like a, a some sort of big machine that uh -huh. these things come out of. But there's this. They're like General Motors. Yeah. Neil Simon. You don't expect to see, a, you know, the guy with the glasses and the, uh, <laughs> out in the orchestra. But I read for it, 
and then I read for him and the director. Then they said, well, we have a screenplay. Take a look at this and, and read this for us now. And I said, I have to leave. And they said, well, come, come right back. And so an hour later, I came back. I sat next to the director. I read through that. Then they said, go read for the play again. I read for the play again. And they said, OK, thank you. And as I was walking out, the casting director said, well, you had a good day. And I said, what do you mean? Did I get the film? Because I had a feeling I got the film. Mm -hmm. And she said, no, you got both. So <coughs> it's very unusual to hear right, right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I left the theater knowing I had a lead in a Broadway show and in a movie. So this is incredible. I, when I walked in, I didn't have were, any of those things. Were, the, were there any actors there who overheard this? Who, uh, I mean, you wouldn't need bodyguards, I would think. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jelko Ivanik, who was playing my brother. I know Jelko. Yeah, he was there. And he was, uh, he was already cast as the brother, so he was just sort of... So it wasn't oh, so hard for him to take. Yeah, yeah, everything's fine. Yeah. And then I was sort of thought, well, I'm hungry. And we went down and got lunch somewhere in the village, and I called my father. And I told him, she said, I got both parts. And then he got so excited that that was the first time I got at all happy. Because I guess I didn't really hear it. You know, I heard it and said, thank you very much. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll report for work on Tuesday, you know. Well, the, the mind tends to reject the I fantastic guess that's what happened. Anyway, so. yeah. But when it bounced off your father, then it became Then I real. thought, oh, wow, he, he's happy about something. Yeah. Something must have happened, yeah. Because you could be re repellently cool about it if you wanted to, you know I mean? If you get anything today, says, yeah, I got a movie and a play. Or yeah, I think I was like that. Yeah. I was repellently cool. I think it was one of each. Yeah, one of each. <laughs> Not a bad day. Yeah. Warm. <laughs> I didn't get a radio play. You know, so. All right. <laughs>